Oh, there's brilliant goals and brilliant um, North Stars to, to go for. I think when people see founders that are really, really passionate about their business, like they live and breathe, they, they, love, it, they love being there. You can tell the sort of, you know, the, the twinkle in the eye, the sort of the smile when you talk about it. But I think, um, just to be honest, I, from day one, wasn't there. Hmm. So, like, even when I launched version one and I was sending it to people, I think I was so nervous about what people were going to think. I didn't enjoy it. Like, it was nice to see, you know, when you've got an idea and you see it finally in the flesh. I'm sure the first time you saw the purchase at work or someone downloaded it, it's great. But it was only the more you invest into it and the more you develop your messaging and your brand and the depth that comes in and the journey you go on, you love it more and more. I imagine it's probably what it's like having kids and I don't have kids, but it's that balance of where my passion for the business now is a lot stronger than it was when I first started. But you do also see a lot of business owners who lose the passion for their business. And that's when things plateau. It's not going how they want. It's just a judgery. There's no motivation. There's no real mission there. And I think when the big thing for me that I really, I think it's what keeps me going. It's for people, the kids that grow up in Liverpool, single parent family, that otherwise would never have access to business education. The fact that they can get my course for free and help them start their first business doing photography or whatever. And, you know, but doing that on a global scale, people, are, you know, would, would love to go to Harvard Business School, but would never in a million years get accepted or pay for it or whatever. There are options out there, but unless you've got 10 grand plus spare cash, which most people don't, the average, average saved money per household in the UK is 180 pounds per month. And that's average. So 50% of people will save more, 50% of people save less. So to pay for your average uh, MBA course is somewhere between six and I think it's 41 years of saving up without spending a single penny or going out for a meal, birthdays, Christmases, whatever. The point is it's impossible. And that's for an average person. So for at least 50% of the population, it's even harder. And I think there's a big equality community thing that I'm really trying to help. It, it's for the everyday person. It's my community where I grew up. Anyone in that background that wants to start a business and grow previously, and correct me if I'm wrong, they didn't really have anywhere they could go. Is when now they do and it's making it accessible and it's making things simple and they can join Zoom calls on their phone and they can watch videos, but there's no cost barriers, time barriers, location barriers that would otherwise hold them back. And I think it's because of that, that's what gets me up. So I was in the office for half six this morning for a seven o'clock session. I don't have to do that, yeah. but I want to. And that's the the real mission of why I'm trying to do all this. Ironically, I don't need the money. It's about the bigger picture. And I think once I really kind of found that and I've started to articulate that, that's what gives me the fire. And I think, you know, if you can find that for whatever you do, and it will be different for everyone, um, that's what will really make the difference in making the decisions that really align to the vision if that makes sense no it does it really really does and and speaking for myself you know single parent most of my life dad was out of the picture i did was lucky to get into uni mm -hmm. you know i got into the startup world and i had maybe a year of, mm -hmm. of business under my belt mm -hmm. so this coming along you know the roadmap mba it was just Wow, I was like, where, where was this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, because, uh, as, as someone that's been through it, and I did it the hard way, but also I'm, I'm lucky enough that, you know, so I worked from scratch, and when I was a kid, and this is a true story, so when if you would have asked me when I was 15, two of my goals was to, I remember the first ever motor show I went to was I think it was 1999, but it was the year they launched the Porsche Boxster. And I saw it and it was so out of reach, you know, as a little poor kid, that was like you know, mind blowing. And my two aims in life were to buy a new Porsche and become managing director. I didn't even necessarily know what managing director was. You know, I knew it was a big job, but I didn't really know what it was. And basically it was 2014, I think, I might get my years wrong, but I'd just turned 33. I was previously almost getting made redundant from an oil and gas company doing what I was doing. Just there was a big downturn, whatever. But anyway, but I, I landed a managing director job of an international company based in Durham, three million turnover, um, at thirty-three, and in the same year bought it was a 
there was there was a new brand of Porsche came and came out called the 718. I got one of the first ones in the country, but it was two of my really big life goals at 33, you know. But I, I was only able to do that because I worked my ass off for a long, long time. And I think ironically that when you start with nothing, you get a work ethic and a hunger because you want to get something. You've got that passion. And for me, that never leaves you. And it's almost where so I still remember what it was like to have nothing. And even when I was at uni, you know, I was probably the poorest kid in my class that when my uh, classmates would all say, oh, should we go to Weatherspoons for lunch? And we're talking like a three pound lunch. I would suck my teeth because I'd be worried about paying for it. And it was that balance of, but, but when you've been through that and you've almost you know, grown up with it, the ability to help people and really kind of give back is what really kind of drives me. But my, going back to your point is, but it's when you've been through it and you understand it, that's why I'm willing to put tens of thousands of pounds, if not 10 times that of my own money into stuff, which I give away for free because I wish I had it when I was 24, 21, 28. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think it's a, it's an amazing story and it's so motivational. But I think the best businesses out there are the ones that you know have that story, that mm-hmm. relatable story that people can get behind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one is, is is incredible, and you're doing so well with it. 